Hey, welcome, welcome back to 4F Beauty. You must know it by now. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is that this is the continuation mm. of my photo collabor inspiration collaboration series. I couldn't have called it something more simple, could I, huh? Mm -mm. No. No. But I am absolutely delighted that uh, the beautiful Val uh, from Gimme Lip and More She's back for round three. So, if you want to know exactly which photograph is our inspiration today and what this looks like in glorious Technicolor and then my friend you are in exactly the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Hey! Hello. Welcome back from the intro. <coughs> okay, I'm hoping the intro is in black and white. I know I say this every time but that's as much to remind me when I'm editing that I meant to have made the intro black and white. Uh, this is, of course, the continuation of my photo inspiration collaboration series, and I'm delighted that Val was up for round three. Yay! Oh, so I've got a bit of a toothache today. Oh, that'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Anyway, this is the continuation, and because we're on round three, it was my turn to choose the photo again. So. Uh, the lovely Kay, who very often sends me makeup, she's my she's my makeup fairy godmother, or as she said, rich aunt who buys too much makeup. She posted this picture, and I asked her what the flower was, and I've got it written down because if you think I can remember this, it's a Fritillaria imperialis. I really hope I've said that properly. <laughs> But I just absolutely, I've got a picture of it here on my phone, because obviously I'm waving it thin air at the moment. Um, I, I just, it just jumped off of the screen at me. And I know you're thinking, but there's only green and orange. No, 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 no. You've got quite a few different shades of green, starting from quite a rich green going through, um, like an olivey green and then a very very deep rich green you've got the beautiful creams and whites that are slightly hint tinted with a little bit of green on the outside when they're still in bud you've got the gorgeous hot orange flowers with on my screen at least it looks like purple bits just at the very top and if you really want to get into it you've also got the silvery grey wooden posts behind it. So there's quite a bit to play with. Yay! You know me in colour. I love colour. Um, for those of you who don't know um, what this series is about, basically it's one photo and two people use that photo as inspiration for their makeup looks. And so far, every single time I've done this, we've come out with different looks, even when three of us were using the same photo. So, the only rules when it comes to this, unlike with palette bingo where you can add extra colours in, but you have to use all the colours you've pulled, this is slightly different. You can only use colours that are in the screen, in the picture. Now obviously, if when you're viewing it on your screen, if you were being the other one of these, and the tips of those flowers didn't look purple, they looked brown to you, that's absolutely fine. It's the colours that you see in the photo. But you can't add any extras in. So you can't think, 
quite like to put a yellow into that. No, you can't do that because there's no yellow on there. Okay. Um, although this is a teaching channel, and again because of my chronic pain, not tooth, but fibro and arthritis, um, I do blend quite slowly. Uh, and uh, if I'm going a little bit too slowly for you, then please speed me up. This isn't going to be like the majority of my tutorials where I literally talk you through step by step by step by step. Um, a lot of the time you're just watching what I'm doing while I'm chatting about many other things. But I do occasionally slip into tutorial mode. Let's get you zoomed in. Uh, my face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed with my usual antiperspirant uh, primer. And all I've got on my eyelids at the moment is MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, which I've not set and it's still slightly tacky. Now, I've got deep set eyes, which a lot of people confuse with hooded eyes because we get very similar issues of um, shimmers transferring onto our upper lid. When we cut the crease, we can't just follow our socket, we have to go up onto the upper lid. And even when I use glitters, ice or glitter glue, I always get patchiness. Now, when I look ahead with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner can't see much of it but you can see it so I've not got hooded lids hooded lids is where your static or mo you know or, or upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line part or all of your mobile lid then you have either a full or a half hooded eye or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye now what I've got is deep set eyes and I'll show you they're sometimes referred to as double eyelids um, I'll show you what I mean. This is the eye I'm blinding so I can close it and still see what I'm doing. If I completely cover my mobile lid and then close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again that folds back away. And if I cover my static lid and close my eye, I've got about half that again on the static lid that folds back in. Okay? You can still follow my tutorials, all of my tutorials are hooded eye friendly because I have the same issues however if you don't have any visible mobile lid you need to create one so get a flat brush like this or a pencil brush and just sketch out with your eyes open and your brows relaxed where you want your crease to fall because I always put a deeper colour right through that crease line which obviously for me will be through here because that gives the illusion of the eye falling back. Anything dark recedes, anything bright comes forward. So, even though you've created effectively a lid space on your static lid, because we're going to be going in with a deeper shade through here, it will give the illusion that the eye is actually folding back in at that point and you have some depth to it. Um, once you've been doing it for a while, you probably won't need to sketch out. You'll know roughly where you need to put your crease. Obviously, it's going to reduce the space between the crease and brow, but just use slightly smaller brushes than I do. Okay. I'm going to start off with my slush palette from September Rose. Um, Code Bomber saves you 10% on their website. And from the beginning of June, it's actually affiliated, so I get a little bit of commission if you do decide to use it. However, long-term viewers will know I've been recommending this palette, even when I wasn't affiliated through them. Uh, for a long time, the code that I had was not affiliated. It was just, it saves you money. So, Right, uh, I'm going to start off by going into Lemon and Lime. And I'm going in with a Luxie 205 tapered blending brush, so look at that. I'm just going to tap off a bit. Now because I've not set the base, if I go straight in with windscreen wiper, it's probably going to grab onto the colour. So what I'm going to do is just initially, very very lightly, tap 
all the way across. To put the to lay the pigment down. I normally go up to about three or four mils of my brow because I like to leave a bit of a gap so that when I put the highlight on up here it really notices. Now once you've laid the pigment on and it's effectively set the lid then you can start with the blending. Now here and here and obviously with these super deep creases here I struggle sometimes with pigment. Um, if you do have an issue that when you're blending like this you're blending the pigment away um, which so far doesn't tend to happen with this unless I'm having a particularly bad crease day <laughs> which does happen but you can see that's that's blended nicely without needing to add any additional colour but you can always go back in and just pop a little bit of extra pigment on if you have lost pigment anywhere um, when you're doing circular movements, circle that way going towards the nose and then reverse the brush direction coming back again because what that will do, bearing in mind I'm 45 and I've lost about 10, 11 stone which is what, 100 and, 140, 150 odd pounds. Um, my eyelids are not as firm as they used to be. Also, I'm 45, so my eyelids are not as firm as they used to be. But some some women never have, or some men never have firm eyelids, even in their 20s. But by doing circles, you're very, very gently moving the skin around, so you don't get any white patches. Okay. Right. So let's tell you a little bit about Val. If you've not seen any of our previous collabs. Um, this is the third photo inspiration collab that we've done. But we've got a couple of others that we've done as well. Um, we've got one where we set each other a, a single colour to use uh, for sort of eyes, cheeks, etc. Um, and we also, because she has a very, very soft, calming voice too, um, we did an ASMR collab together where we both read. Uh, our favourite poem. So, um, obviously, all the photo collabs are in the photo collab playlist, but they are also in the collaborations playlist, and the previous two collabs that are, that we did are in the collaborations playlist. Now, with this one, because I have such deep creasing there, sometimes it will not. Yeah, do you see the the white sort of barcoding or striping that I get there. So I do have to very, very gently pull that lid out. Now do not do that unless you absolutely have to. The only reason I have to do it is because that I got pulled around when I was a kid. And by kid I mean five years old, so we're talking 40 years ago. Um, it was pulled around a lot at the ophthalmic hospital when I was trying to work out why I wasn't seeing out of it very well. Um, I lost the sight in it completely when I was 13 in case you're wondering. And uh, it has left me with that deep, deep creasing on that eye, which I've not got on the other eye. And this eye, if I'm going to get fallout, I'll get it more this side. Because this eyelid, where it was pulled around so much, um, is less firm than this one, even though both eyes are the same age. Right, I'm just wiping the pigment off of this brush. I use a, uh, just a clean washcloth. Um, but as you can see, there's no more pigment coming off, but it has it, white bristles always get stained. Everybody knows this. Um, now I'm going to go into hmm, let's go into cucumber lime from the Slush Palette. And because this is set now, I can just run through in like a windscreen wiper movement. initially through my crease. Obviously if you've moved your crease up then you do the windscreen wiper along the line that you've laid. And this time I'm going to do circular movements again but I'm not going to take it up the eye. 
I'm going to keep it in contact with the green line that I've put down so that I don't completely cover the previous green that I've put on there. And I'm just going to blend that until it blends nicely into the, into the lighter green and then I'll do the same on the other eye. Yeah, so Val is, um, she's American and she's a nurse which is awesome because both my mother-in-law and my stepmom are both nurses. So I kind of feel a bit of an affinity with her anyway. She's got a wicked sense of humour and she absolutely loves playing with colour. So clearly we get on ridiculously well. Uh, there was, she's, she's just recently um, settled down to work at just the one hospital now because she was a mobile, she was sort of sent across to different places that she was needed. But she's now sort of settled into the one place, I think, which is awesome. And she very often does car vlogs where she does her makeup in her car, which I love. I love those. I think it's a brilliant idea, kind of, you know, you've, you've overslept in the morning, you've managed to get your shower and wash your hair and throw a coffee down your throat before you head out the door sort of thing with a, you know, like a cereal bar or something in your handbag. And then you get to work, because so, you, you don't leave it because of traffic. You get to work and you sit in the car park and you think, oh, I've got to put some makeup on before I go in. Otherwise I'm going to be scaring people. I don't think I'm half dead. So I love when she does those. And she sort of puts her makeup on in the car. And she's always got good stories as well. Things that have happened and what's going on in her life. You don't have to dust the fallout away straight away if you don't want to, because obviously I haven't done my base yet, but I know that if I don't, when I'm editing, it's going to really bug me and I'm going to think, why didn't you sweep that away? <coughs> so you can see this is building up really nicely. And I'm just really gently buffing where the two greens meet. Just to sort of soften that edge. I keep sitting back and looking at them both because obviously your eyes are not symmetrical. Uh, do I want to go in with another green or shall I go in with the deepest one? No, I think I'm going to go in, I'm going to swap palettes and I'm going to change brushes. So I'm just going to get the green off of this brush again before I pop it back down. I always um, wipe my brushes off like this every day when I'm using them. Um, if I've used a cream, I've got an a antibacterial brush spray that I spray on them and then wipe them on the um, flannel, washcloth. And then once a week, they get a deep clean. Right, I'm going to go in with a, I'm going to try it, this one doesn't always work, sometimes it, it fluffs the pigment out too much, I'm going to try my Morphe 562, and I'm going to grab my Coloured Rain, a Safari Rain palette that hubby got me for my birthday, and I'm going to go into Jungle, which is this glorious deep green here. I'm going to run that through my crease, but I'm going to do it, because it's a darker colour, I tend to do it in little short windscreen wiper movements like this, because then you have more control over it and you're less likely to get fallout than if you go straight in with a huge grate, because I, I don't want this line to be too thick. what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do the circular movements again to blend that out, but I'm going to blend it on the actual line itself, I'm not going to go up the eye at all, because I just want to soften the edges and just make sure I've not got any patchiness. Obviously with this eye I've sort of tilted my head back and I'm looking down into my mirror down here. Um, it'll be easier to show you with my other eye because I can actually close that one. 
but being blind in the sight, if I close it, not a lot of makeup happens. So yeah, um, this is the third collab we've done in terms of my photo series that I do. Um, the last round we did was actually Val sent over a picture of some fabric, which was awesome. I never even con considered that. Never even thought about because there are some beautiful fabrics out there. Um, but uh, I've, I've literally I've got a folder on my phone with any time I see a picture that I think oh, that'd be good for the photo inspiration series, I grab it and stick it in there. And then depending on who I'm collabing with, what previous looks we've done, um, what palettes I know they've got. Because obviously I don't want to, you know, choose a picture if it means they haven't got any of those colours and have then got to go out and spend money. Because the whole point of this is, it's it's kind of like a shop your stash. It's It's sort of, this is the picture, now find stuff in your collection that you've got that will help you recreate that picture. And I just, I think that's a little bit more fun than just shopping your stash, because it gives you um, parameters to follow, and it is sort of, you know, I've found myself using, because I don't know about you, but you get your favorite colors in a palette, and you always tend to sort of go for those colors. I know I always do anyway. Uh, I mean, I try all the colors out when I first get the palette, but then I get my favourites, and I just think, yeah, I'm going to do my favourites, you know? And uh, it's good, because it kind of pushes you to use colours that perhaps you don't use that often. And combining colours together that perhaps you wouldn't normally think of putting together. Um, and it's just, it's such fun, I really do love doing them. Uh, and thankfully, it seems that other people are enjoying it as much as me, which is lovely. So, if you've got a photo or anything that you'd like to see me use in the Photo Inspiration series, um, my Insta and my Twitter are both listed in the description box, and also, uh, I think they're on one of the end screens. I'm sure I'll pop them on one of the end screens as well. Just send me the picture or tag me on Insta or something. And uh, you never know, you might see a photo that you've suggested turning up in this series. Okay, so can you see what I mean now about how having that darker shade makes it look as if the eye is going a lot, lot further back? So it's all about trickery. It's all about fooling the eye. Right now comes the fun bit. Because I'm going to add some orange and some creamy white or shimmery white. Oh, I could use my. I don't know what I could use for that. my I don't use this very often because obviously you can't really get it anymore although Colourpop do do a very good dupe for this this is the Nicole Guerrero ABH um, glow kit and it's got very very pretty highlighters in that one had to be repressed, hence the, the greasiness around the edge there. But I'm going to go into this one here. Forever Lit. Now, I am going to wet my brush. Never, ever, ever put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. Because that will guarantee you hard pan and will bugger your pigment up. I'm going in with a, well, this is a Studio 5 London brush, it's just a pencil brush. I'm just packing a load of the 
highlight all on the brush. White brush, white highlight, really good info there, bum up. And then I'm going to use, this is just a Revolution Fixing Spray. You can use anything. You can use a moisturising spray like Mario Badescu or Fix Plus. You can use a fixing spray. You can use a priming spray. You can just use clean water. Um, so, wet the pigment on the brush. And then I always dry the ferrule off as well. So you don't get any moisture going down and loosening the bristles in the brush. And then I'm going to pop this on the first part of the lid. And I'm going to dry the brush off on the flannel again. Pick up some more pigment, dry this time, and pack that on top. Wow. So, same thing, load the brush with pigment, dry the ferrule off, now this time I do have to hold the lid out because otherwise I get pigment just collecting in these creases and then as I blink during the day I get showers of it coming down, right, how far out do I need to go, I need to go to about there. And I've, I've not cut my crease and these shimmers will end up transferring onto the upper lid through the day. But you're only going to see it if my eyes are shut or I'm winking at you. So, dry the brush off, going back in, picking up some of that pigment, but dry this time. You can see that it gives really good opacity because you can struggle sometimes, particularly with white highlighters, when you're using them like this. It can be quite difficult sometimes to get the opacity that you want because obviously highlighters are not designed to be opaque. Um, but I've found that applying them wet and then while they're still wet, popping a dry layer over the top really, really helps, as you can see. And now I'm going to go back in. I'm going to grab my, this is um, Rod and Lang Nickel Chic Pro. It's actually their spot concealer brush. It's really good for packing colour onto the lid. So I'm going to go back into my coloured rain, Safari Rain. And I'm going to go into Tigress. I'm a tiger, I'm a Showing my age again. As you can see, she's a little bit shiny. Right, grab my little mirror so I can see up close what I'm doing. Let's try her wet. looking for. I'm going to pack that on the middle third heading out towards the edge and then I'm going to clean the brush off completely. I 
I'm going to pick up the tiniest little bit of toucan, which is a gold, in the palette, and just use that to buff where the two shades meet. So we get a nice blend. Hmm. I like that. This tigress is such a beautiful colour. I just, I really, really love the colour theme of this. Um, I've been lost enough with the Gemini palette, but just, I just couldn't justify spending that amount of money. Um, and then it finally came to Beauty Bay. But by the time it arrived, I'd got this one. I'd got um, Certify Affinity 2, um, I'd got the Colourpop Just My Luck 9 pan green palette and um, I'd got Igneous Cosmetics Lakeside palette that Kay sent me. So. I didn't feel the need to get Gemini, which is probably quite fortunate because if it's anything like smoke sessions, it was so soft, mine arrived completely shattered. So again, cleaned off and I picked up some toucan on the lid on the tips of this. And I'm just gonna use that very, very light gold. Just to buff. Where the two colours meet, just to soften it up a little bit. There. I like that. I like that a lot. Right, I am going to pause you while I go off screen and put my foundation on and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you so I'll see you right now I'm back as you can see I decided to do purple brows to pick up on the purple at the base of those orange flowers well it's purple on my screen anyway admittedly not quite that bright a purple, but it's purple. Okay, cool, yay. Uh -huh. hmm. Right, I'm going to use my flat top brush that I showed you earlier and I'm going to dip back into the jungle. Just got the very tips of the bristles. Because when my fibro is so bad at the moment, it makes my eyes very watery. Combine that with hay fever, eyeliner, it, it's not my friend right now. So what I'm doing is I'm doing my usual putting the colour underneath my eyes. But then I'm continuing it up to the same point that I would have taken a wing. because that still gives the same impression of the eye being pulled up and out. Hopefully you can see the difference between the two eyes. So if you are someone who struggles like me with very runny eyes, this is a good solution if you still want that same kind of look. And then just, again, this is why this only works if you're going to use the same sort of colour that you've used through your crease. So if you wanted to put a different colour underneath, you, that wouldn't necessarily work as well. Um, I mean, you could try it and see how it goes, but personally I, I find that the harmonious linking of the two gives the, the same effect sort of thing. And then I'm going to go in with this, uh, let's close my 
coloured rain palette. Uh, I'm going with this brush. This was the brush out of the um, Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, Swamp Queen. And I like it because it's flat topped but it's chunky so it's great for getting up under your lashes and buffing out. And I'm going to go into the one green in the slush palette that I haven't used yet, which is Sour Apple. Again, just grab it on the tips. Tap off. And just very gently buff that along the lower lash line. I like that. really is a very very powerful green I'm really looking forward to seeing what slush 2 looks like I've got her second palette I've got brew um, I think the tutorial for that has gone up photos I know have gone up on insta um, but I think I think the brew tutorial will be the film before this one that you're watching now. I think. <laughs> right. Now. Highlight time. Mm. There's a bit of a quandary. What should I do? Ooh, right, okay. I'm going to grab this Makeup Addiction Cosmetics Holy Glow Fantasy Highlight Palette. And this is basically a, an old lip brush that I bought from eBay years ago. And I'm going to go into the green, which is called My Lord. Oh, my Lord. And I'm going to pop that. Oh, I can see why it's called My Lord. My Lord, look at that. I'm going to pop that on the inner corner. And with my shape eye, I find bringing it under the tear duct and just gently blending it into the start of the colour we've run underneath gives the best um, result for my, my shape eyes. It's the most flattering sort of effect oh wow these are stunning I bought this um, a while ago now I hadn't really used it but wow that's so pretty mm. I'm going to go back into my Anastasia Nicole Carrero or Guerrero I should say sorry and I'm going to pick up a little bit of Daydream and run that just up under the top of my brow there this is the slightly orangey it's, it's that shade, basically. So again, it's picking up on the orange on my lid there. Don't be afraid to mix colours like this. I know normally I do whatever's on my brow is also on my inner corner. No reason why you can't mix it up. Oh, I do like that. I like that effect a lot. Oh yes. Right. I'm going to pause you one last time while I put highlight all over the rest of my face. Uh, put some mascara on and some lipstick and I'll be back to show you the finished result. I'll also do something with my hair. 
I'm back. Fluffy as a poodle again. Right, in terms of what I've got on my face, the foundation, I'm in the middle of testing a new one, so I can't tell you what that is yet. Uh, concealer is the Too Faced Born This Way Super Coverage in shade Swan. Bronzer is Butter Bronzer in shade Bronzer. Blush is my MUA Blushed in Papaya Whip. These are a bang on dupe for the Milanis, but they're a damn sight cheaper. Love them. Uh, lipstick is a combination of Fenty Beauty Saucy topped with some of Jeffrey's Wet Peach Lip Gloss. Mascara, as always, is my Catrice Glam and Dull Waterproof, which is the dupe for Bad Gal Bang, but uh, waterproof and cheaper. And the setting spray today, I decided to go for Milani and make it dewy. So, the highlight that I used, um, I used a fan brush, but even then that daydream was uh, too deep for me. So I used the daydream and then I went over the top with this Forever Lit. So it's, it's still got an... Um, an orangey undertone, but it's when I when I when I, when I sit here and face you straight on, you can't see the dark streak, which you could do when I just had the orange highlight on. So there we go. This is my final look. I'll put the picture up here again for you. What do you think? Hmm? Do you think I've made a good job of? Uh, recreating the photo. Is this what you would have done or would you have done it differently? Let me know in the comments below uh, how you would have uh, recreated this particular photo and if you want to recreate the photo and stick it up on either Insta or Twitter please tag me and Val because we would love to see it. Um, thank you Kay for letting me use your beautiful photograph and thank you Val for collabing with me yet again. Um, as always, please double double check you are still subscribed. Um, YouTube are shocking at the moment for unsubscribing people, unringing the bell, changing the bell from all notifications to some notifications, which as we all know means no notifications. Uh, so yeah, please double check you're still subscribed. Obviously, I've got a lot of other films you can watch not just in this photo collab series, but all kinds of different things. However, before you check out any of my other films, please go across and check out Val's version of her interpretation of Kay's photo. And uh, just let her know that you know, you're, you're part of the 4F family and send her some of the love that you all show me. I gotta admit, I um, I really like this. I don't normally wear this Fenty lipstick because it is a matte lipstick, and even though my lips are moisturised and soft and smooth, and I can wear other sort of bullet lipsticks without a problem, this one always makes my mouth look so dry. Um, I don't know what it is about this formulation, but. You know, I've, I've had it for a couple of years now and you can see how much of it I've actually used. But funnily enough, there's, there's no mould growing out of it. Or hairs, or fibres, or air bubbles, or sweaty bits. Yeah. Um, but now I've got this peachy gloss to wear over the top of it. I actually really like it. It's a little bit bright, but when have bright colours ever scared me? Right, okay, don't forget to check out Val's film, please. And now, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. 
Bye for now.